Bridget looks a little bit different now. <laughs> Just kidding. This is, Lumos is closing this out with me. Hey guys, welcome back. We are gonna sit down and talk today about muscle training. We're gonna do a discussion on why it's important and then we have um, a dog here to do a little demo for us and kind of all the different steps to work towards as you are getting them comfortable with the muzzle. Um, Bridget, what are some reasons that you would say it's worthwhile to do muzzle conditioning with your dog? I think it's important not only for dogs that like have bitten people, but to prevent bites from happening, particularly I think it's a good idea to start muzzle conditioning at the vet because ultimately a lot of people think it's the vet's responsibility to yeah. put a muzzle on your dog and sometimes it can make things go a little smoother. It can be a preventative issue from having your dog know that biting works to stop people. Um, so even some of my dogs are muzzle conditioned when we, when we visit the vet um, in that scenario. I don't use it too much in my house because my dogs don't have biting issues, but people mm -hmm. that are working through something major can sometimes utilize the muzzle in the in-between stage as they're getting more comfortable with getting to know their dog's signals or um, to prevent bites from happening in their home or out in public. Yeah, I think that um, if you have like a young puppy, I think that it's a lot of people don't even consider muzzle conditioning a lot of the time because you have a puppy, you know, yeah. you don't expect any need for it. But I think that with puppies is one of the best times to take advantage of mm -hmm. doing it because they have no preconception correlation with it at all. And you can make it very smooth transition on getting them accustomed to it. And it is a very good, important life skill. I would put it in the same category as like crate training, yeah. potty training, like being able to wear a muzzle is going to remove so much potential stress in the future. You may go the whole dog's life and mm -hmm. never need it. Okay, whatever, no harm done. But if you encounter, they have issues with handling or grooming as they start to get older, mm -hmm. they start to develop some fear as they get older and you need to work through that socially. If they get injured and they're reacting aggressively because they're in pain, you know, so all of those mm -hmm. different aspects can be um, good reasons to just prepare them with the muzzle. So that way, when you have to add it into there, it's not an added stressor on top mm -hmm. of everything else that's already stressful. Yeah. And going back to the point of the vet, like it don't wait until you get to the vet to know that your dog has some issues being handled kind of take the preventative measure, go through muzzle conditioning so we can remove some stress from the dog. Because mm -hmm. we know that when if we jump into the muzzle too quickly, a lot of the times it can have a negative effect on dogs and they're pawing it and yeah. they're panicking because this foreign object is on their face preventing them from one of their only defense mechanisms. So mm -hmm. going into it slowly and mindfully is going to be so much better for you in the long run than just trying to slap it on when an issue is proven or yeah. when an issue happens. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't, then at that point you don't have the luxury of taking your mm -hmm. time and you just have to do it. Yeah. And if that happens, it is what it is. You know, there's ways to work around it, but if you can make it a less stressful situation and you have the ability to do that, why not? I think that another aspect to keep in mind too, is that as you're working on this, don't allow people to like make you feel silly for doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's plenty of times like with my dog, who's going to be our demo today. Um, if I have him muzzle, I still muzzle him consistently every time he goes to the vet because um, he has been a very spicy dog in the past. And though um, I would say he's moderately reformed, any vet visits where they're going to obviously be poking and prodding in a very close proximity mm -hmm. and all of these things. I just want to cover my bases and make sure that he mm -hmm. doesn't harm anybody. And with those trips, a lot of times, depending, you can get comments like, oh, he did so good. He doesn't even need that anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, why is he wearing that? He's a good boy. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that where it's like, I could then feel kind of like embarrassed, you know, and then maybe next time I don't do mm -hmm. it or, you know, stuff like that. Don't allow people to make you feel silly about yeah. doing it. It's a very um, good 
and healthy thing to teach your dog and have them use in certain situations. And I mean, what's the, what's the worst? Like what what what's bad about it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's no downside yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like judgments that people that don't have the information have. Yeah. Um, I had worked with a very, very sweet client yesterday and we talked about muzzling and we actually sent her home with one. Um, and she was like, let me ask you this. Will he think of it as a punishment? Yeah. And the muzzle's not designed to be a punishment. Like you've been bad, you're going to get the muzzle. It's a way that we can ensure that our training can be done in a really safe manner. And I think it gives people so much more confidence when it's starting to work through true aggression yeah. or dogs that have bitten people. Because yeah. that can feel scary like yes. it, when your own dog bites you um, to kind of get back into the swing of things and be the leader again. Mm -hmm. So The muzzle is more like a seatbelt. Yeah. Because, like, you don't you don't wait to get into an accident mm -hmm. to then be like, now you have to wear your seatbelt because yeah. you're a bad driver. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you wear your seatbelt mm -hmm. so that if something happens, you're safe. Yeah. And you put the muzzle on your dog so if something happens, they're safe mm -hmm. and everybody else is safe. Um, it's a preventative measure. Yeah. It's not a reactive measure at that point. I also have a dog that needs muzzled at the vet and currently he doesn't have any teeth. So he cannot do any damage, but I yeah. still muzzle him at the vet because I feel it's going to have his stress levels come down a little bit because he's not performing the mechanics of turning say, and biting. Psychologically, yeah. he's still biting. Because it's still a jump scare for the vet techs as they're examining him and he's like, ah, 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 and he's biting and he's, it. yes. <laughs> um, I think he has one tooth left in his mouth. Oh, no. But and honestly, if he bit somebody, he might knock it out. Yeah. He's, you can't be having that. I know. You gotta yeah. save his last tooth. <laughs> yeah, we save the last tooth for what it means to him <laughs> chewing his kibble. Oh so my gosh. we still utilize that, although he can't, because he's a small dog, it's not going to be as a series of a bite, mm -hmm. but I still don't want him to think that's an option. Because as we know, once dogs know that biting works to get people to go away, to get people to stop touching them, yeah. it's reinforced that they can act that way in the future mm -hmm. and kind of control situations. So, yeah. Well, cool. We will do our little demo and I'll kind of take you through step by step um, different ways to be able to get your dog accustomed to it. And hopefully, typically this, this process honestly can take like, a week to two weeks. doesn't take very long at all. Um, we will be using food for this. One note I will make is that if your dog is not very food motivated um, and they're just not hungry, so they're not doing it, um, they only get to eat during this exercise. Only allow them access to food when you're doing this exercise and they will be hungry. <laughs> Um, so if you have a dog who just really isn't that into food, it's okay. You just may have a day or two, maybe a day and a half where they just don't really want to eat. Um, your dog is not going to starve themselves. They're not just going to wither away because they refuse to eat through the muzzle that we're going to be using for the drills. Um, they will get hungry enough and they will do it. Typically, if your dog does not have a decent amount of food motivation, it's just because they're overfed. Yeah. Or over-treated. So, over-treated. There's, it's lost value because it's such open access. Mm -hmm. So, um, you think about anything that's valuable in the world, it's valuable because the demand is high and <clears throat> the supply is low. <laughs> so, if you are constantly handing out food and treats to your dogs, it depletes the value because they can get it for anything and anything at any moment. So if they only get access when they're doing the muzzle, it increases the value quite a bit. For the demonstration part of this, um, this is my dog Lumos. <laughs> and um, he's already fully muzzle trained, but um, he's more than willing to help us today as we walk through all the different steps. So the first step, you're gonna take whatever you're using, whether that's a high value treat or whether that's your dog's kibble, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're gonna put it in your hand and you're gonna set the muzzle right on top of it like that. <laughs> um, and this is kind of the response you're gonna get generally from most dogs, they're like, give me the food. 
Um, and their only way of getting this food is by going into the muzzle to get it. So he gets to come inside, then he can get the snack. We're gonna do this over and over and over again. And the point of this is that instead of me taking this and shoving it on his face, which he's fine with because he already likes it, but if you take a brand new dog and you do that, you're gonna get that mechanism where they pull back because it's alarming and they're not used to it. So we would much rather have them be the ones putting their nose into the muzzle because it's a lot more inviting that way and they feel like they have some kind of choice in the matter. So for the first like three days, just do this. For your dog's meal times, take their food, put it in your hand, have the dog eat it. And of course, if you're using their meals in kibble, you can do like handfuls of food at a time. You don't have to do one kibble at a time and take forever. What you're gonna get once you've done this for about three days and six meals roughly, is that when they, you pull the muzzle out, they actually will start to get excited because their association with it now is with something they really, really like. So it will actually start to create a positive association. Um, after you've done that step, the next step we'll do is basically, you should at that point be able to just put the dog the muzzle on the dog and them not really care. Um, at that rate, I can start to have it on there for a little bit longer of a time, maybe mess with the straps a little bit, um, take it off and then give my reward. And so now I'm starting to reward for him tolerating that whole process for a short period um, instead of needing that immediate reward um, right in the moment. We'll do this again, bring this around. You can give a treat while they're wearing it as well, just like that. Take it off again. Now we can do this. Now maybe we snap it on this one. Give a snack while he's got it on, very nice. That's the nice thing about Baskerville muzzles is that at, for the very least when you are muzzle training a dog, uh, they're very easy to get food through. So they're a nice starter muzzle. Um, if you need a muzzle that's more bite proof later on, you can move to that once the dog is more conditioned to it. So remove that, another reward. Um, once you've done that for about a few days, maybe three more days at that point, um, now we're going to be putting our muzzle on and we're gonna add a little bit of movement once the dog starts walking while wearing the muzzle, sometimes that's when you can get a little bit of like, they almost look wobbly. <laughs> or some dogs will just pretend they're paralyzed and their legs suddenly don't work when they have the muzzle on their face. Um, or they'll start pawing at it and messing with it a little bit. I recommend, um, one thing I didn't mention at the beginning was I recommend having a leash on your dog throughout this whole process because you wanna be able to keep them with you. Um, and when we're starting to do the movement, the leash is gonna enable us to give some leash corrections if we need to, if he starts fussing with it a little bit. Um, come. So when we move a little bit, good. I can give some rewards for that, for him walking with me and not messing with it. Good. Very nice. If he were to start messing with the muzzle, <laughs> did you get it? If you were to start messing with the muzzle, I will just tell him no, give a little bit of a leash correction to interrupt that behavior. Good. Because of all of the conditioning um, and that we've done up until this point, it would be very rare for your dog to have a really strong aversive reaction to the muzzle. If anything, it's just gonna be very mild um, pawing at it. Okay. Good. And ultimately, those are the steps. It's pretty easy. It's not that hard. Um, and for the payoff that you're gonna get of a dog who um, has a very awesome life skill that you may need at any moment, um, it's not a lot of effort to put into. So I think it's definitely worthwhile, definitely worth taking the time. Um, and look how adorable he looks. Bridget looks a little bit different now. <laughs> Just kidding. This is, Lumos is closing this out with me. Uh, he's earned it at this point. So really, like I said, the Baskerville muzzle is one, I think a great muzzle for most dogs. It's a good option. 
Um, if anything, it's a great starter muzzle to be able to do the training with. Um, and then if you need to move on to something more bite proof, um, Jafco muzzles are probably one of your best bets. Um, so you can look into those as well. Um, there's a number of sites that have um, training muzzles as well that actually have like a flap on the front <laughs> that you can open that you can put treats into. Um, those are good resources. Um, if you need very small muzzles, um, Learberg has uh, quite an array of muzzle designs and styles. Um, that's one of the places I direct a lot of people to. They even have some breed specific muzzles like your bulldogs, roddies, and dogs like that that have very interesting measurements for their snouts. Um, so you can look into some research, do into, do some research and look into your options if you have a breed that um, doesn't fit most of the conventional muzzles that you're gonna see that are more generic stock sizes. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything about the process or need clarification on things, um, feel free to comment and we can get back to you and clarify whatever we need to. But thanks for hanging out and hopefully you're able to take this information, put it to good use and teach your dog a really cool, important life skill. Thanks guys. Thank <laughs> you.